So how will you draw an end humans given their IU pet names? Well, the first thing I like to do is draw these structures without any stereochemistry at all. So I'm going to draw a 2,3-dibromohexane. Well, starting with the parent chain, we know hexane looks something like this. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? That is hexane. Now we have on carbon 2, we have a bromine. In carbon 3, we have a bromine. So the molecule looks something like this, but now we got to show stereochemistry. So on carbon 2, we have an we have it R configured. In carbon 3, we have it S configured. So how could we make this S? How could we make this R and how could we make carbon 3 S? Well, it becomes trial and error, right? So I'm going to start with this carbon here. So I'm going to have this carbon here. Now notice we have a bromine, we have a methyl group, we have a hydrogen and this R group bonded here. So just as a trial and error, you could start with the bromine going away. I'm going to start with the bromine coming out of us. So I'm going to give this, I'm going, I'm going to give the bromine a wedge, right? So I'm going to give the bromine a wedge and I'm going to get my hydrogen going away from me. Therefore, I'm going to have a CH3 here. And I'm going to have a C, right? I'm going to have a C here. All right, so which one gets priority number one? Well, again, bromine is always going to be priority number. It's always going to be carbon and hydrogen. Hydrogen is priority number four. So which one gets priority number, priority group number uh, two? Well, going out, we're going out one here, we get hit a carbon. We're going out here right here we get hit a carbon going one more out we hit a hydrogen going one more out we hit a hydrogen because this is a ch right going one more out with a hydrogen we hit a hydrogen going one more out we hit a bromine and so this will be probably number group number three number two and this so therefore this has to be three right so notice how i kind of extend right to determine whether one is two or three I go out each one. So carbon, carbon, one more out, hydrogen, one more out, hydrogen, one more out, hydrogen, one more out, bromine. All right. And now draw your arrows. The good thing is that your hydrogen is all already going away from you. So this will give you right to the answer. So my bromine is going one, two, three, and then it goes to four, right? So again, this is going R, right? So in this case, we got lucky, right? So our bromine is going exactly away from us. So this will be our R, right? So now we got to figure out how to make carbon 3S. Well, a lot of times if you have both chiral centers that are uh, adjacent to each other, all you got to do is just switch your lowest priority group from a wedge to a dash or vice versa. In this case, or highest part, I'm sorry, but not lowest priority group, your highest priority group. In this case, your highest priority group is going, coming out at you, it has a wedge. So therefore I'm gonna change it to a dash and we should get an R. But, you know, for practice, you might try something different, right? There's there's more than one ways of drawing this molecule. So I'm gonna have a carbon here. This bromine will be going away from me. All right, so therefore my hydrogen our hydrogen will be coming out. All right. I have the C. This is bonded to a C. This carbon here is bonded to a C. This carbon here is bonded to a C. And it's also bonded to a C here. All right. Uh, so we know bromine gets priority number one. This gets priority number four. So which one will eventually win out? Right. Well, if I go one out, we get, I get a CH. If I go one out here, I get a CH also, right? If I go one more out, I get a bromine. If I go one more out, I get an H because remember, that's a CH2 right here, right? So you could see that this will eventually win out and this will be probably group number three, right? So doing our arrow, this goes from one to two to three and then to four, right? So you could see that this is going to R, but remember, because our lowest priority group is not actually away from us, we could just say the reciprocal of that and that will be S, right? So the structure will look something like this.
right? On carbon two, on carbon three, if we want to make it S, we said the bromine has to be going away from us, right? That means the hydrogen has to be coming out, right? But we can't, we don't, we don't really show hydrogen, so that's fine. And therefore, the bromine on carbon two, we said to make it R, has to be coming away from us. And that will be a structure of 2R3S23-dibromohexane. Let's look at this one. Draw the structure of R112 trimethylcyclohexane. Well, again, I'm just going to draw the structure without any steric chemistry at all. And the structure looks something like this, right? So we have this cyclohexane here. On carbon 1, we have two methyl groups, right? For 1,1. One, one. And then on carbon 2, we have this methyl group here. So this is how the structure looks with no stereochemistry. Well, notice that where is our chiral center? Well, chiral center will be this, right? Because here we have a methyl group bonded to this R group and it's bonded to this R group with two uh, methyl groups here. This cannot be a chiral center because again, we have two of the same substituent on this carbon here. So there's only one chiral center here. And again, this should be a hint by giving R you know that there's only one chiral center. On the other molecule, we had 2R3S, which implies that there are two, there are two uh, chiral centers there. So this is the original molecule. So how could we draw it without any, with, uh, how, uh, giving it a R-configurated molecule, right? So again, starting with a chiral center, we have this carbon here. It's bonded to a CH3. And it's bonded to a C and it's bonded to a C, right, with a hydrogen, right? So I'm going to make the, you know, I could possibly make this go away. So I'm going to give this a dash, and so my hydrogen will get a wedge, right? So let's see, which one gets priority group number one? Well, again, the methyl group is always bigger than these two carbons here. All right, so this will be priority to group number one. Well, which gets priority to group number two? Well, going one out, we hit a carbon, all right? There's no hydrogen at this carbon. So going one more out, we hit another, we hit another carbon. We hit another carbon from the CH3 here. Here, going one out, we hit a carbon. Going one more out, we hit a hydrogen because remember, there's a CH2 here, all right? So this, hopefully everyone will see that this will eventually win out. All right, so this will be one, this will be priority group number two, and this will eventually be priority group number three, All right? So this goes from one, two, three, All right? So this is going S right now, but because our hydrogen is, hydrogen is not going away from us, we could just simply take the reciprocal of that and this will be our R. Now, and so the molecule looks something like this. with the CH3 going away. And this will be the confirmation of R112 uh, trimethylcyclohexane. Now, there's a trick to this thing, and this one is tricky. And it's not tricky, but this is this principle, and there's a reason why I do this. Because a lot of, here's what a lot of students will do. Okay, they know that we have a chiral center here, so this here's what they'll do. Have a chiral center here, and we have this, you know, methyl going away ch3 and you could give it a wedge too you could it doesn't matter i'm just choosing random stuff but here's what they'll do they'll have this carbon here give it a wedge so therefore my hydrogen has to be coming out and you could see that i have a, a c i have a carbon here that is bonded to two to two ch3 so i could simplify this and say this is two ch3s right and then here we have a ch2 and here's what they'll do all right oh okay this one is heavier than this so therefore this gets part of group number one ch2 is lighter than ch3 so this will get part of group number two this gets part of group number three so therefore i have something like this so this is going r so this is going r but because our hydrogen is not coming away from us this is actually s and a lot of students will use this as, uh, you know, as the R configuration, 
right? They'll use this as the R configuration or use this, some sort of this analysis, and that is wrong. Uh, and here's a trick. Anytime you have a chiral carbon that is bonded to that is bonded to the substituent, you always want to give that substituent the priority group in terms of just pure carbon, right? If we're talking about oxygen, uh, you know, bromine and stuff like that, it, it, that that that's much more easy. But whenever you do it, with, like, whenever you do it with that pure organic structure in terms of carbon, and carbon, right? Label the substituent that is branched off the carbon as number one. Now, if you had, right, you always want to label that as number one. And so in this case, my CH3 is not number one. And notice that I didn't just do the CH and two, I did, did the C and the two methyl group in one step, right? Because if I had done this, now I would be looking at this as priority group number one, when in fact, that's not the case. You give your substituent your priority group in terms of pure carbon, carbon compounds, and then you go out, okay, so like what I did here, label CH3 is priority group number one, and then I go out and hit a carbon, go out and hit a carbon, go out one more, hit a hydrogen, go out one more, hit a carbon from one of those methyl groups, go out one more, hit a hydrogen, so therefore this will get priority group number two. So be careful.